imagine if we could grow all the fruits and vegetables we need without using any pesticides? What if we could grow crops even during a deep drought? Instead of this vast monoculture, what if our farms looked like this? I believe that this is the way that we need to farm in order to produce nourishing food for all people without damaging our planet. But that's not the way we farm. Our planet is incredibly productive. It produces ample food for all the people of the world. And yet 800 million people are chronically hungry, another billion people are malnourished, and two billion people are overweight or obese, often due to poor diets. How we farm is very environmentally destructive. It contributes one-third of greenhouse gas emissions. It is a major cause of tropical deforestation and biodiversity loss. It uses 70% of freshwater resources and has caused large areas of fertile lands to become desert wastelands. So one of the challenges, the grand challenges that we're tackling here at Berkeley is how do we produce enough food for our families now and into the future without killing our planet. Well, you might wonder, what do bees have to do with this? Well, I've been studying bees for 20 years, and they have a lot to teach us about how to farm sustainably. Bees are critically important for human health because they pollinate 75% of our crops, including many crops that provide us with essential vitamins in our diet. So our research at Berkeley has shown that when we have different pollinator species on our farm fields, including domesticated honeybees, but also other wild pollinators, then we get enhanced crop yields. And we found this to be true for many crops in many regions of the world and on both small and large farms. But bee populations are threatened due to various reasons around the world. And one of the reasons is the way we farm itself. Monocultures are inhospitable habitats for bees. They provide few of the floral and nesting resources that bees need, and they also have many pesticides that kill bees. So what can we do to restore healthy bee populations and communities? Our research has shown that we need to re-diversify our farming landscapes on multiple scales. Around the farm fields, we need natural habitat patches and grazing lands. We need to plant non-crop vegetation like hedgerows around the perimeters of our crop fields. And we need to plant multiple crop types instead of a single crop type within the farm field. These diversification tactics across scales are called a diversified farming system. And they together support healthy and abundant pollinator communities that provide crop pollination. There is growing evidence that other key inputs that farmers need, including nutrients, water, fertile soils, and pest control, are also contributed by diversified farming systems. And that when farmers farm in this manner, they can reduce their use of harmful chemical elements. So diversified farming systems, by supporting the habitat of soil microbes, pollinators, predators, and other beneficial organisms, can provide nature services. And at Berkeley, we are investigating nature services in many different ways on farm sites. We're also investigating what are the social, policy, and economic innovations and opportunities that we need in order to try to transform our landscapes into ones that are more diversified. For example, China currently is investing a large amount of money in adopting ad organic agriculture. And we found here at Berkeley that organic agriculture can improve yields through diversification practices. So now we're partnering with Chinese partners and looking at ways that we can improve organic agriculture in China through diversification. So it's a huge challenge, but I'm hopeful that by diversifying industrial agriculture, we can reduce its environmental impacts and that by diversifying subsistence agriculture, we can improve yields and thus help to lift people out of malnutrition, hunger, and poverty. And so you see, the bees are showing us the way. Thank you.